Hi, I'm Christy York. See this long prickly sucker coming out across the path? It's my friend Himalayan blackberry. I'm gonna show you how to harvest a fiber out of these long vines. You definitely hear a lot of negativity about Himalayan blackberry being an invasive species, and it is a bully wherever it establishes itself. But who doesn't love a ripe berry in the height of summer? And now I'm going to show you how to also get a useful fiber from this plant with a bad reputation. You'll want to keep your eyes open for these long vines. When you observe them, you'll notice there's no flowers and there's no berries on them. The best time to harvest the fiber is going to vary depending on where you live. Generally speaking, it's sometime between late spring and early summer. A really good indicator is take a look at the flowers. If there's both flowers and unripe fruit on the plant, then it's a good time to harvest. So go ahead and find one of those long vines and trim them off. Now, let's get rid of those thorns. I wear heavy gloves when I do this, and I like to do most of the processing there on site, so I will trim off all of those thorny side leaves, and then I will tackle the thorns themselves, as you can see here by snapping them off sideways. You can also use a heavy cloth. Some people use a piece of leather. It's all so that you are taking less material back with you into the studio. And here I am just removing the rest of the thorns that I didn't get on site. And now you're ready to get out the fiber. You just basically take either end and give it a twist. And right away, you'll start to feel the fibers right there. You'll just want to get rid of that pith and keep stripping that outer layer of bark. And you wanna get as long of a fiber as you possibly can. That's kind of the goal in, in any kind of basketry when you're harvesting natural material. Get the length that you can. This started peeling quite nicely for me and then it started to get a bit dry and sticky and that's when I realized I was perhaps hitting the end of the season for harvesting. You shouldn't really need to use a knife. The bark should just peel off beautifully on its own. What I would do in this case is keep my eyes open for more blackberry bushes that have been growing in the shade. Those vines will have retained their moisture for a lot longer. And there's your beautiful fiber right there. This still has the outer bark on it, which is a really thin outer layer. And what you're really after is that inner layer, which you'll see is quite a bit more of a fibrous layer. And I'm just getting those uh, knobby bits off there as I go. And then you can take the time if you want to peel that thin outer layer off. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't bother because by the time you get around to using this, you're going to dry it, you're going to re-soak it, and you're going to be handling it. And a lot of times that outer thin layer will just come off naturally by itself in the process of using the material. And now you're going to want to roll this stuff up to dry. So you'll want to roll it outer bark side in and that's so it'll dry nicer, it'll dry flatter and it won't curl up on itself. Use a scrap of your lovely new fiber to tie it up. Nature's twist tie. Here's some after it's been dried. It'll keep for years in this state as long as you don't get it damp and keep it out of the sun. I've had some for probably five years now. When you are ready to use it, you can just pop it into some lukewarm water for about 20 minutes and then it should be ready to use. I like to weight it down with a rock so it all soaks evenly. After that initial soaking time, I'll take it out and I'll let it mellow in a damp cloth. At this point, the fiber is generally good to use for about a day or two before it starts to break down. If you don't think you're going to get to it in time, you can always pop it in the fridge. Now that you've got your blackberry fiber, what are you going to do with it? Well, it's a fiber that's close to my heart because my very first basket was made with blackberry bark spokes and daylily weavers. Yep, that's it, my very first basket. It may not look like much, but this planted the seed for me 
and I took a deep dive and went down that rabbit hole, learning everything I could about basketry arts. And here's a great tip if you're a beginner. My first basket was woven around a mold, in this case a glass jar. It really makes it so much easier to keep things steady and in place. You could also make cordage out of your blackberry bark. It's a very tough fiber and I find it to be a little bit rough. I've started experimenting with that inherent rough nature of the fiber to see what else I could use it for besides basketry. Here I'm using a vintage wool carding tool to help me break the fiber down further. But you could use any kind of fine tooth comb. I've seen people use something that was meant for dogs and cats. There's all sorts of plant fibers that have been traditionally used in brush making, so I thought it would be really cool to try and make a brush out of the blackberry fiber. Et voila! A blackberry fiber brush with the cedar root handle. Now, you might be thinking, what's wrong with just a store-bought paintbrush? For me, I really like the unpredictable nature of the marks that it makes on paper. Plus, if you're anything like me, which I suspect you are since you've watched this far, you just really appreciate a beautiful, quirky, handcrafted object. So there you have it. The Himalayan blackberry isn't just the bad boy of invasive species. Like so many plants, it's got a lot more to offer than first meets the eye. Like so many plants, maybe we just need to look a little bit closer.